Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about <clears throat> serverless architecture and backend developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what role do you see, or rather, what do you think is going to happen with serverless architectures? And what role do you think that backend developers are going to have within this structure? And the short answer is, I believe that this is the trend which everything is moving towards and odds are that the marketplace will become saturated with bootcamp level developers. Let me explain. So I, I'm pretty sure I've touched on this question before, but hey, repetition is fun, right? So the basic idea that I have is that everything, everything in IT is continuously moving towards higher level abstractions. Now, I want to say simplification, but as we all know, saying that something is simple is very, very hard because it's very subjective. But I think that we can all agree that if we compare ourselves to how it used to be back in the day where you basically needed to have a PhD or something similar in order to even work on a computer and today where, well, most people have the ability to use a computer and it's never been easier to get access to programming content on the internet and get help and so forth if you want to do some programming right. The tooling has become more and more advanced but also more empowering and simpler if you will. And I believe that that is going to continue. I believe that what's going to happen is that initiatives such as, for example, I'm not saying especially K-native or K-native or whatever they call it, K-native, I think that's the, how they pronounce it is just another building block on top of things that has already started to happen. If you take a look at, say, something like Docker who, that came around and kind of simplified a lot of the work that is going on in operations, that is an example of what I'm talking about. We're talking about that an entire group of people and operations team, and in many cases they still are needed, have been simplified or abstracted away in many cases so that fewer people can take a large responsibility for something that is very, very tricky because the infrastructure at large scale is extremely complicated. You can reduce down the amount of work and the amount of people that is needed in order to manage all of this. Now, for developers, there is one thing, thing that I truly believe is still a problem within the development community, and that is the problem of choice and the maintenance problem that comes with choice. So what I mean isn't that you, sh you know, I'm not saying that we should impose on our freedom necessarily. What I'm saying is that all of the tools that you are accustomed to or the things that you need to learn in order to basically do programming could in theory be reduced down to a very, very small set of responsibilities. I would say that in a perfect world, I think that a developer should only have to know Git, any programming language, literally whichever, you know, let's take for the sake of argument, TypeScript or Golang or something like that, and then need to know one single SDK that is what I call company specific. Let me explain. Now, the reason why I argue this is because the vast majority of us, we are spending quite a lot of time setting up projects, learning about new tooling that helps improve our build process or building static assets or doing some other work that pretty much everybody else is already doing. If you look at something like, say, Webpack, that is more or less one of the industry standards for how to bundle static assets. Well, that is a very, I would say, for most people, that's a very complicated tool. It has a bunch of loaders and a bunch of modules and configurations that you can tweak and do certain things with. It's extremely flexible and extremely empowering, but the, if you look at the adoption of something like Parcel, for example, or Rollup or similar tools, where they basically just bundle all this together for you so that you can do basically all the things and have very reasonable defaults, if you will, well, these tools are much simpler to use than Webpack. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, I'm just saying that it's simpler. And that's kind of where serverless came into to all of this, where serverless has introduced the same sort of concept where 
you don't have to learn how to, like, let's say for the sake of argument that you're working in Java, you don't have to know what a POM file is. You don't need to know what, what, how to set up a server, like a Tomcat server, a JBoss, like whatever server type you're using. All you actually need to know is how to write a function or an action handler that you then use, uh, let's say that you're using Firebase. Well, then all, well, in this case, Firebase doesn't support Java as far as I know, but let's say you're doing it in Node, right? Well, then all you need to know is how to make that function and how to deploy using their CLI or their SDK or something like that. that that's all you need. And that's kind of the point of software developers, our, our job, if we're going to be frank about it, is literally to convert the business requirements into working code. And that's usually done simply by having a function on the net, or like the uh, a fu function that handles an incoming network request, and then converts that into something. It can be dispatching an action to a message queue, it can be saving something to a database, it can be some computation, and then 99% of the time you just respond with a value that is persisted to a database of some sort. All of this, all of it, can be expressed just through that action handler. It has, there are, if you think about it, if you just came into a project, well, most of the time, it doesn't really matter what tooling you're using or like all of these other things that you need to, con to take care of or know about as a software developer. Because if you can simply focus on the minimum thing, well, then you're going to be able to be productive immediately. It's sort of the same difference as a lot of juniors will feel when you come from school or you do a code test or something like that and they ask you to implement a single function but when you go out into the real world you'll see that you're not dealing with one function you're dealing with a massive monster of code now what i believe is that because all of these uh, these different uh, these in innovations are happening and because we have a massive deficit of developers in the industry the only viable option is to simplify the workflow somehow. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen overnight, but I see the trend moving in that direction, especially with Kubernetes and other such tools that basically just keeps on doing the same thing, just adding layers and layers of abstraction so that you can do more with less people. My guess is that at some point, and this is going to take a while because there's a lot of prejudice, there's a lot of old value systems that needs to go away in order for this to happen because quite a lot of companies still feel like, bootcamp developers or self-taught developers or so forth, like they're not worth anything or like they won't take a risk on such a person sometimes, even though this person might actually be able to do it. So th there's a bit of, I'm not saying elitism, but it's an outdated value system that needs to go away, right? And once that happens, they will start to realize that, damn, we can actually cut costs by hiring, say bootcamp developers or self-taught developers who have a fraction of the experience that the more senior experiences today have and then we can simply have because you're simplifying the workflow you're simplifying that they don't need to know all of these things and this sdk i was talking about well if you're a big large-scale company it would be very it would make a lot of sense for you even today to have a team or some group of people who maintain a higher level abstraction of tools such as well, if you want to look at one SDK, look at the Amazon SDK that inter interacts with all of the AVS services. That's exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about it from the perspective of the, the actual company. Now, you might have a few really senior developers who are really, really focused on just infrastructure and DevOps and stuff like that, and they maintain a SDK for the company. Now, that SDK might be going to a database, uh, to a... Um, session management system or even AVS or buckets or so forth they, but the developers they don't have to know that all they have to know is what the interface like the API looks like and then that's it that is what I'm guessing is going to happen but as you can also then imagine if it becomes more accessible then we might see a situation where back-end developers will be forced well the average salary might go down because it became so accessible to actually do this i'm not so sure that that's going to happen for for front end because front it's we're still we're not at a point where i think that that sort of innovation can happen for front end developer now front end is actually becoming even more complicated than it used to be but we'll have to see how that plays out so what i want you to take away from this is that at least what I believe is going to happen with serverless. I believe that this is 
just the first step. This is just where we're kind of heading right now. And I believe that long term, this is what's going to be the reality for most back end web developers, where you will consume some SDK or some very high level tooling, either your own in house tooling or something that is built on top of some company's SDK or some company SDK, something like that, that simplifies your workflow to the point where you don't actually need to know in theory to how to how to set up, I don't know, a Go project from scratch. You simply need to know how to make a request handler, a function that handles the incoming request. And that's pretty much it. And then odds are that the market will become more accessible for people with less experience than today. And well, that's at least what I'm guessing is going to happen. Have a great day.